Why are ships painted red below the waterline? Her on this video will be knowing. Let's go. Ever noticed that ships are often painted red below the waterline? Have you ever wondered why? This distinctive red line, visible on vessels of all sizes, is not just a design choice. It's deeply rooted in the nautical world, linked to the concept of a ship's waterline. This waterline, a crucial element in ship design and operation, often bears a coat of red paint. But why red? Why not blue, green or any other colour? Let's dive into the history of this fascinating maritime tradition. The practice of painting ships red below the waterline dates back to ancient times. Our maritime forebears, those intrepid seafarers of old, knew a thing or two about the harsh realities of the ocean. They discovered that red ochre, a naturally occurring pigment, could be used to coat their vessels, providing a level of protection against the corrosive salt water and deterring the growth of marine organisms. Over the centuries, the tradition stuck, but the reasons behind it evolved. As shipbuilding techniques advanced, so too did the understanding of what was needed to protect these mighty vessels. The simple red ochre of old gave way to more sophisticated paints and coatings, including those based on copper. Copper-based paints, known for their bright red hue, offered more than just a vibrant splash of colour. They provided a robust shield against biofouling, the accumulation of pesky barnacles and algae that can impair a ship's performance. By keeping the hull smooth and free from marine growth, these paints helped ships sail more efficiently, saving time and valuable resources. Yet the choice of red wasn't purely practical. It became a part of maritime tradition, a signal to those in the know about the vessel's readiness to face the open seas. So, from ancient mariners to modern seafarers, the red line below the waterline has remained a constant, a testament to the enduring wisdom of our seafaring ancestors. But what makes red in particular the colour of choice for this job? It turns out there's a scientific reason behind the red paint. You see, this isn't just any red paint, it's typically a copper-based concoction. Copper is a natural biocide, warding off marine critters like barnacles and algae that can latch onto the hull, a phenomenon known as biofouling. Biofouling might not sound like a big deal, but it can drastically affect a ship's performance. Imagine your ship is a swimmer, and these marine organisms are like an extra weight. It becomes harder to move through the water, meaning more fuel is consumed. So by keeping the hull smooth and free of these hitchhikers, the red paint contributes to improved fuel efficiency. Now let's talk about another important aspect, the ship's draft. The draft is the vertical distance from the waterline to the bottom of the hull. It's a critical measure as it can change based on several factors, like the amount of cargo on board or fuel consumed. The red paint serves as a visual indicator of the waterline, helping sailors gauge the ship's draft and loading conditions. It's no coincidence that the red line is often referred to as the load line. So the red paint isn't just for aesthetics, it's a practical and scientific solution for maritime challenges. However, in the modern era, red isn't the only option anymore. Innovation in maritime technology has introduced several alternatives to the traditional red. Moving beyond the conventional, we delve into the world of advanced materials that are revolutionizing the way we paint ships. One such leap in technology is the use of silicon-based foul-release coatings. These non-toxic, smooth coatings make it difficult for marine organisms to latch onto the hull, thereby reducing biofouling. Not only do these coatings keep our ships clean, but they also contribute to improving fuel efficiency by reducing the friction between the water and the ship's hull. Next in line we have self-polishing copolymers. These are high-tech paints that gradually wear away in water, exposing a fresh, bio-resistant layer. This self-renewing ability ensures that the hull remains smooth and free from marine growth, providing a long-term solution for maintaining the ship's performance. Alongside these, we're seeing the rise of other advanced materials, such as nanotechnology-inspired coatings that promise exceptional anti-fouling and corrosion resistance. These innovative paints are designed to mimic natural anti-fouling mechanisms, 
combining the best of nature and science. But like any change, these advancements come with their own set of challenges. The cost of these new paints, their compatibility with existing ship designs, and the need for specialized application processes are all factors that need to be considered. Nevertheless, the quest for alternatives that provide superior protection while minimizing environmental impact continues to drive the maritime industry forward. In the world of maritime, progress and environment often find themselves on the opposite sides of the scale. This delicate balance is incredibly important when it comes to the use of anti-fouling paints. These paints, while crucial for the longevity and efficiency of vessels, must be regulated to ensure they don't harm our precious marine ecosystems. The International Maritime Organization, or IMO, plays a pivotal role in this balancing act. They've developed the Anti-Fouling Systems Convention, a set of guidelines to limit the environmental impact of harmful substances released from ship coatings. These regulations are designed to ensure that the paints used below the waterline are as eco-friendly as they are effective. But why is this necessary? Certain types of anti-fooling paint, particularly those containing heavy metals like copper, can have a detrimental effect on marine life. When these paints erode, they can release toxic substances into the water, posing a threat to the fragile balance of our oceans. So in the face of these environmental concerns, the maritime industry must innovate. Scientists and engineers are constantly working on developing new types of anti-fooling paints, ones that can ward off marine growth without wreaking havoc on the environment. This is a crucial part of the story when it comes to why ships are painted red below the waterline. It's not just about the colour, it's about the science, the regulations and the ongoing quest to protect our oceans. So, the red colour below the waterline isn't just about aesthetics, it's a tale of functionality, innovation and conservation. So, to sum it all up, the red line you see on ships serves a trio of purposes. It's a shield against biofouling, boosts fuel efficiency and indicates the draft of the ship. But remember, the maritime world isn't stuck in its ways. It's constantly evolving, exploring alternative paints and coatings that can offer the same benefits while being kinder to our blue planet. That's the tale of the red line you see on ships. We hope you found this journey as fascinating as we did. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Thank you for watching and don't forget subscribing to get every news and I wish you a bon voyage and safe travels. I hope you found this information helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, take care and have a great journey.